Hello. Uh, no technical difficulties, but uh, I did just get down here and get all this set up. So hopefully everything is working. The stream deck does not appear to be working. I can't play my cool sounds. Oh, wait. No sound. Why not? Turn this down before it scares me. How is everyone? We'll get this figured out in just a second. Um, yeah, desktop audio properties. I really like the sounds. This is probably going to wreck everything. Hold on. I should have been more prepared. I should have been more prepared. But that's not my thing. Prepared? Meh. Okay, hold on. This might break stuff. Seems like every time they change something with Windows, I get screwed on this deal. Oh uh, yeah, do it. Is it working? How about now? We did it! Okay. So we're still here. All right, now I feel better. We have some sound. Okay. How is everyone? I said that already. Soval SV06. That's what we're gonna do today. Um, good morning, afternoon. Uh, somebody said the other day that I really like this race. Good time zone, everyone. I enjoy that. Uh, there's a lot of people in the chat. I saw Bill Steele. I see Sergio. Kevin Schofield is here. Bill Brothers. Uh, Nick Nick. Uh, SP3D. Mike Fancy, Never Let the Machines Win. Hands down, probably the best YouTube moderator. Uh, I was thinking about that earlier today. Uh, Mike is only here for the sound effects. Thinking, what is the proper stipend per year for an awesome YouTube moderator? They should get something. Because some of these folks, like Mike Fancy, they do multiple accounts, and they do, like, every stream. You know, and some of these last a long time. So I think there should be some sort of fund for YouTube moderators. I think we should get that started. Okay. Um, for work for home transition? That would be pretty cool, work for home. You could... I get to see being in meetings when somebody has a bad idea. That'd be awesome. They would love me for that. Um, Soval SV06. So I, this printer was purchased with my own funds. All opinions expressed are my own. This one I got months ago. So this is probably one of the earlier ones. I don't know if they've made changes to it or anything like that, but I have had it for a little while. I don't know when they shipped it, but I want to say I got it in like late November. Um, I believe I gave two hundred and twenty-nine or thirty-nine dollars for it. Um, it is an Ender Three style printer. There's nothing going to get around that. It's the it's the aluminum extrusion Cartesian machine that we're all used to, but it does have a few little things here and there that I thought would be worth giving a try. Um, I, I, I need another one of these printers, like a hole in the head, but given how the extruder works on it for the price point that it is, I thought we should check it out. I know a lot of people on YouTube have already looked at these. That doesn't matter to me at all. Uh, it's just, do I think, you know, it lives up to what else we, we've been working on? Is it worth switching to this type of thing? I think it's worth us taking some time, hanging out. Printing a Benchy and just seeing what it does. So that's what we're going to do today. Okay. Pancake Day. Mmm, I love Pancake Day. Uh, 
Thomas, Maker Viking, I am doing well. I hope you are doing well. Bedhead look? Do I have bedhead today? I don't know. I'm usually pretty... <laughs> I'm pretty well kept at all times. Yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> um, do I need to get a link or anything to this? Oh, no. Let's just go ahead and tear into it. Uh, I think these cameras are working. You can see my extremely orange coaster all the way out there. I can't get that camera to line up square to save my life. Again, you always have kind of this fish eye when you're using webcams, basically. But that's as straight as I could get that one. So at least you can kind of see what's in the box. Tom Lama's here. Bill really likes the SV06. He has half a dozen of them in the front farm. Uh, as, as well as half a dozen bamboo machines. It said, YouTube's currently saying it's not receiving enough video to maintain a smooth stream. Is there something wrong with it? The current bit rate is 78 hundred and it should be 4500 this is what we always stream at so let me know if it's starting to break up paul the texan i hope you're going to have a good day looks fine to you okay it's probably just youtube complaining about something well, let's tear into this thing we gotta get going we got things to do today um it is cold very cold here today so you're probably going to hear the furnace running but it's nothing unusual for our streams. We are in a basement. There's always something wrong with YouTube. That's for sure. Good, good. Uh, frustrated about warping ABS and ASA. I hear that. Uh, if you don't know Tom the Maker Viking, he's working on a couple of different printer designs, I think, right at, right at the moment. Awesome, awesome. We do get a manual. How many steps? You know, I don't do over 12. It looks pretty similar to everything else we've ever looked at. Screen, power supply. The what? I do want to do a little bit of investigation. I know we usually crack these open and see what's inside, but this one I'm just a little bit more interested about what's going on with some of the pieces of this machine. So we'll see if we actually get it to work after I take it apart. You should always have a few extra parts when you reassemble a 3D printer. Leveling guide, huh? Looks like Marlin to me. Don't forget to save your settings. Oh, they want you to do... Huh. I wonder why they don't put... I wonder why they don't put baby stepping, like probe offset, on some of these. Maybe it has it, and it just doesn't say anything about it. But you could adjust that on the fly. Jose from Portugal, awesome. Oh, Jerry, 3DP, awesome, you're here. Jerry ha usually does streams later on Saturdays. I don't always get the chance to join them, but uh, he does stream quite often. Got one yesterday, some bearings sound like sand. Mm. Hopefully the grease solves that. Wing. What else? There's a spool holder. Oh, well, they've separated. It's still hooked on, of course. But the control box is in like a injection molded lock type. You got the card and the that that's USB 
micro Scott Hack Monkey is here. So large, hard to avoid avoid warping. Yeah. Interesting color, honestly, for injection molded parts. Oh, what do you call that? Like a Arctic blue. I don't know. Pops injection molded. It kind of, it reminds me a little bit of like the Genius. What's that, what's that company called? Artillery? I don't know what they're called now. They were artillery. Power supply. It's the off-brand. Very common to see. But it is black. And it has a fan. They do need to do away with that. I, I'm ready for everyone to go to USB-C. Just everybody do it all at once. Do it now. Go. Copper colored. Does that actually have like a sheet on the back or is that bare? I don't know. It's got kind of a texture to it. I think you could print on that if you really wanted to. Um, it's pretty thick. Turquoise. I guess turquoise, kind of a flat turquoise. And then here's the big chunk. They've done, they've skinned the, the extrusions to where you mount it. Interesting. And then they've got the molded bearing blocks on the bottom of the bed there. And it's capped with injection molded parts. Janus, Janus, subscribed. Thank you. Bearing smooth. We'll check here in just a second. We'll see how loud they are. What else is on here? Here's our extruder. This is really the only thing I'm interested in, honestly. I mean, the rest of it, you know, that's all fine and good. But what's up inside here? Hmm. It does have like a 10 millimeter induction, in, inductive probe on it, which usually you see eight. So it's a little larger than usual. Is that supposed to be bent that way? <laughs> That's never a good phrase. Is it supposed to be bent that way? Anyway, what's in here? Oh, I see a broken piece in the bottom of the box. Micro shear. This is just power cord and some filament. Are these cutters? Is that what we're talking about here? Oh, you do get a little scraper, bed scraper. And you get a nozzle tool. SD card. Uh, we we got to look at this. I see something interesting. Oh, uh, yeah. Just the cutters. Anything else? What about our broken piece? Where does this go? It's a wire guide for the bottom of the extrusion. Yes, it goes right here. It's been broke off. That's an odd thing to break, like the way it did. Hmm. Okay. I don't think there's anything else in here. I think we're good to get rid of the box. Long time no see. Hey, Ron, how's it going? Vision Miner Nano Polymer Adhesive. I've used that before. Tom, any, any luck with that? It's okay. It's not broken. It's the shorter piece. I wish that was the case. But it is a really odd... Th I mean, I'm not concerned about it. But it is a really odd thing to break. This one's like glued to the foot. But it's definitely snapped off. I don't know. It's cut at an angle, at least. 
and it doesn't want to fit in there. <clears throat> Don't really care. All right. You probably don't want to do overhead. We usually flip to this. This like here, like mirror. And bearings. That's the, that's the first order of business. Let's see bearings. All of mine had it loose. Hmm, interesting. Bill, you have so many 3D printers. What is it that you farm? Do you like take, I, as many times as I've talked to you in person, we've never really talked about what you actually do with all these machines. I guess I never really, over, I kind of overlooked the need for so many 3D printers. But anyway, do you like take orders and do farming, like actual business farming and things like that? I never really thought to ask. Jackie Riley is here, that's my wife. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Oh, chameleon parts. Okay, cool. Which I still need to talk to you. I need to get into that cutter. Uh, I I need the cutter part for uh, for to upgrade to my chameleon because I think that would be awesome. So these bearings, as far as I'm concerned, the belt's pretty tight. They sound okay to me. No grindy. So I'm okay with that. So if you were having problems with bearings, hopefully a little grease will get you sorted out. Um, there was something in this bag that I thought looked unusual. Maybe I was seeing things. Maybe I, I thought I saw like, maybe they were just screws and it looked funny through the bag. I thought I saw a weird something that looked like a novel, but it's not. It's your standard. Well, I don't know. It's kind of weird. Where is it? There. Well, oh, and you're not seeing this. You're seeing this. There you go. It's got kind of a interesting tip on it. But, okay. And really, I mean, the directions were just do this, do that, and you're done. Everybody that got the printer's bed was loose. Fifty base done and done. What do they got on this thing? Motors in the front, party in the back. Um I don't know. It so this bed is on standoffs. Which so they're going to rely on auto bed leveling, which is cool with me. I'd rather you do it that way than put it on some shaky springs. I just hope it's flat. You can see just a little bit of flex in there, but you know, don't push on it. So pretty easy assembly. Well, we've got a handful of screws here. Andy is here. What's up, Andy? CR6SE nozzle. I never got into the CR6. I do get a lot of questions on it. We did get all the wrenches. Awesome. Anytime, Andy, you, at, at your convenience, you just let me know. You fire away and uh, I will get back to it as soon as I can. Uh, I was working with an individual. I, you all probably know this already but I do take a lot of requests via email and in the comments and things like that for 3D printer help. And uh, I was working with an individual not too long ago and I'm not sure what the actual problem was. That he was having a really hard time with consistent bed level, which, you know, how, how many of us have had problems with that? All of us, right? Uh, but he had a BL touch and he was, you know, we went through the, was the probe accurate? What's the math look like? All that good stuff. And the maps came back inconsistent every time. Uh, and, you know, I went through and kind of mapped it out. Like, okay, the bed looks like this. The bed looks like that. Trying to figure out what was the actual cause. 
and I never really got close. Be being doing this kind of thing over email with pictures and stuff is hard. But so my guess was we had a little bit, you know, a little bit of a couple of things. Maybe inconsistency in the probe. Um, it was a Creality style machine of some kind. So who knows what the actual problem was? But he ended up throwing the whole thing away. <laughs> uh, and he, but it didn't deter him. He got another printer. I don't remember which one he told me he he got instead. But uh, he did get another machine, and he sent me $50 for trying to help him. I didn't even get it fixed, but he sent me 50 bucks, and that's not very common, honestly. You help, you know, a couple of, you know, 10, 15 people a week, you might get 5 or $10 here and there, and I, of course, I never ask for money. It's just, you know, if you help somebody out, tips are always appreciated, no matter who you are. And, but he sent me 50 bucks, and... He said, thanks for trying. I threw this thing away, but uh, I'm still going to 3D print. And I'm like, awesome. That's, that's all that counts. So, so sometimes you run into things like that. Even though you weren't able to help, things turn out still somewhat okay. So that's good. Fun story. Yeah, good story. Red light is here. Awesome. Red light mic. Hello. Yeah. All is good. Hopefully everything's okay with you. Are you still doing large machinery? Mike was, uh, at one time, was a large machine operator. He would, like, join the streams and listen while he was doing that. I don't know how safe that is, but he did it anyway. And I, I respect him for that. <laughs> That's right. I just want 3D printing is very stressful. It can be, especially when you're new and you got all these people telling you to level your bed and <laughs> and stop buying this and do this and do that. Just and I, it's always a good feeling when you you actually help somebody find something and then they get off and going on their 3D printing venture. Thinking about my first FDM printer, I'm torn between the SV06. And the Neptune 2 base model 120 from which I would upgrade heat break. I'm just hobbying. Is it truly worth to spend the 150 more? Well, I haven't had a lot of luck with the Neptune 2. Uh, it's very basic. My, the one that I have, the bed is really warped, so it's hard to get a good first level. I don't have any experience with this one yet. But maybe Bill can answer that question, because I know he does have experience with pretty much all of these. Uh, is it worth the 150? I don't know, but this one has a lot more features on it than a Neptune 2, like auto bed leveling. And the bed seems to be uh, stationary. It's not on adjustments, so it should be a little more consistent, I hope. Is it worth the money? I can't tell you that yet. but. This is definitely a step up from the Neptune 2. All right. I'm always safe at work. Me and you both. No. Uh, in a shear crane today. Nice. nice. See, I told you. Interesting people come to these streams. All right. What else do we have? Like, what can I put some stuff on before we start taking things apart? We can put the screen on. It's so hard to. Sh I love to watch the screen peel, but it's so hard to show on camera. My wife likes. My wife does a lot, almost all of the editing on videos now. And she likes the screen peel because she likes to put the the porno esque music behind it. But there you go. Anyway, you have to have at least one of those a day. So we can put the screen on. It just slides on the base right mirror. Oh, you get two options. You can kind of lay it flat or lay it upright. think. Hmm. 
Mine only, well, you'd have to adjust the screw. I want mine to be on the other one. Yeah. Meh. Oh, I thought this was in a slot. It's not. It's just in a hole. For some reason, I was thinking that was an ex like in an extrusion slot. What is up with that? I don't like that at all. Huh. I don't know. Banshee's not done yet. Plastic's still under the screen where they put the bezel over it. That's always fun. Why is the controller box not mounted? Uh, they leave it off on this one and let you mount it. It's like in a like a lock thing. Uh, I guess that would be handy if you like wanted to put it in a enclosure. Benchy's not done yet. Unsub rolling on the floor laughing. Unsub. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Andrew, for the, the 10 bucks. But it must be in that order. Otherwise, you'll mess up the settings. Uh, Alright, so let's see. Let's check out the control board real quick. This is kind of our thing. What's in here? What is that? Why are people still putting these in things? They green, they put a piece of green like paint over the chip. What is it? My eyes aren't good enough to see it. Is my phone good enough to see it? Editing a short video. Chuck is doing electrical shorts now, you know, like YouTube shorts. And I don't know why, but every time he posts one, I think it's hysterical. Because, you know, electrical, short. The paint they put on this chip makes it really hard to see the number. Beep. 3D occult printing? Thank you for the sub. I gotta invest in like a mind a magnifying glass or something. I can't tell what it is. Where's the flash on this thing? I recently switched to an iPhone and I feel like an old person because I have a really hard time with it. But this is like kind of an old school setup, so I don't know what drivers they're using. But it's a very cut down mainboard setup. It does have a blade fuse though. So there's what you get. There's a dip switch on it. I'm not sure what's up with that. The screens from the the guide, the screens looks like look like it's Marlin. But it's Kind of your typical Creality board setup, from what I can tell. Is it an IC clone? I wish it was. It's an R. So it's a it's a thirty two, but all I can make out is it's an R E T six. So that would make it an S T M thirty two of some kind, but I can't tell which which chip it is. It's got a big green it's got a big green paint thing over the over the number. Anyway, okay. So that's what we're dealing with as far as the main board goes.
it kind of looks similar to Creality. I'm not going to throw the clone word around, but yes, it looks pretty similar to a lot of the things that I've seen. Probably. So this thing does like this. So it just has these two brackets, kind of movable. Throw it on there, and then you have this lock to keep it from sliding up. Bing! It's like locking you out of your own refrigerator. So there's that. What else do they want us to do? They want us to put the spool holder on. I don't feel like it. Um, Next, we're going to see what's up about this extruder. Again, the extruder is what I'm most interested in. Hmm. Doesn't look real easy to take apart. You can see what I was talking about as far as, is that supposed to be bent like that? That bottom bracket there, it's bent up. I mean, it's the part fan, so I don't think it's going to hurt anything, but uh, it does have a little lean to it, if you know what I mean. Yeah, don't feel like it. <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know. Let's just poke around on this thing, see, see what's in here. Because it's got through screws. Oh God, those are tight. I don't have any. That's the wrench. I'm going to sneeze. That's the wrench I always strip. Two millimeter. So I never have a good sharp ended one. The two millimeter hex wrench is the 10 millimeter socket of its day. Nope. So it looks like, I'm trying to keep you, uh, there's a CR on their, on their uh, nozzle sock. Does that mean it's a Creality sock? So that's interesting, but <laughs> uh, so there's just the inside of the guts there are just, there's a couple of screws going into that motor. So we're going to see if that whole thing slides off of there. There is a bracket for the part fan kind of going, or actually that's the hot end fan going over that sink. So just trying to give you the play by play of what I'm, what's happening here. CR stands for Christmas. They customized that just for me. What's up, Tony? <laughs> awesome. Bugo. I like that name, too. It's tearing apart. That's right. Yeah, who cares about the printing? We know what a Benchy looks like. We know how this is going to end. Let's tear it apart instead. Besides, I paid for this. Uh, the, the only thing that's, uh, I don't have to worry about offending a company. They sold it to me. That's their fault. <laughs> These companies have a list. It's like, okay, we're not going to sell anything to that person. They'll show what happens on the internet. As you've, we've been doing this a long time. Over five years doing this type of thing, and it just keeps getting more and more interesting. Oh, well, there's things I like already and things I don't like. Uh, and these are all my opinions, but we've been doing this a long time, and we've found some very interesting things on 3D printers together. We've, we've had some interesting moments. Um, but I will say, <laughs> There is a way to handle those things, those said things that you find, and then there's a way not to handle those said things that you find. Um, we're all professionals here, right? 
uh, we uh, we operate in a certain capacity. I don't ever want to see somebody release a product that would hurt someone or is just bad all around, you know, and, and take people's money. You don't want to see that. But uh, if you really want to uh, make a company straighten things up, there's a certain way to do that. And uh, we, uh, we as a team have the power to make that happen if we do it in a certain fashion. So that's, the, that's all I will say about that. So what the, the, the first thing that I saw when I cracked this open that I said, hmm, maybe I don't like that so much, is like this is the original design from the Omnia drop. I don't know how many of you uh, follow Drop Effect. They, are, they now got bought by Fetus. They, however you say that, the, the hot end company, um, the three planetary gears on the wheel like that, that's, uh, I, I've seen similar designs like that before. So that's kind of interesting, as well as the larger gears. Uh, it had the same type of gear design. Now they switched it up. This, again, this was like the first rendition of that. Tom Lama knows what I'm talking about. Uh, he's, a, he's a drop effect fan. But then you have kind of the watch gear and the planetary on the other side. It's definitely, I mean, there's nothing wrong with what they've done here. Um, it's probably, you know, far enough away. I mean, the, this, these designs aren't even being used anymore. But it is a pretty cool way to do an extruder setup like this. It works really well. It keeps the pressure on the filament really even. So, definitely cool to see that they're doing it. But it, it looks, you know, nothing is, no, nothing's original at this point, right? You're, you're not, it's not a late breaking design. I have seen things like this before. So that's cool. We got to see exactly what was inside here and how it's doing its thing. That's major, that's the biggest thing I wanted to get out of today. Let's see if we can put it back together. Uh, orbiter, orbiter like. Uh, we're gonna have to start. Uh, we're gonna have to start talking about like the, what what build tack like uh, surfaces. Orbiter like. Um, we'll have to come up with a creative name for all of this. I got to actually talk to Max. I don't know if we've talked about that on the streams before. I got to talk to Max a little bit. I've, I've never met him in person. He was at Earth this year with Fetus. Um, he was with John Schoen. Um, why do I always forget John's channel name? That's no offense, John. It just always is prop, proper, print, practic, proper printing. Practical printing is crusty. Proper printing is John Schoen, right? It's terrible, I should remember these things. What size screw is this? Proper printing, thank you. Thank you both, Bill and Steve. Can Chris get it back together? I don't know. This one doesn't want to seem to grip anything. Did I lose the screw out of the back of this? I thought it would just screw into the back side of the motor. You can see the screw head of the other one coming from the other side of the motor. It might just be just not long enough. Maybe like maybe just a millimeter too short. How long is this one? Hmm. It's uh, always easy to let the magic smoke out. It's really hard to get it back in. Is it DOA? No, we're just uh, dissecting it for a little bit of fun before we uh, 
do the inevitable. There is not enough thread to grab that screw. I wonder if it was floating around in there and I just didn't know it. Doesn't want to come out. There we go. It's got, it's gripping. So the screw is going in from the heat sink into that pancake motor. And there's a motor on the back side. So there's just a couple of threads available on the front. The bottom one seems fine, but this one has the, t the two threads on the end are just burred enough that it doesn't want to grip it. There are no spare, I don't know, that's like a M3 by 14 or 16. But I don't want to put that in there and just let it float around. That's not good. You don't want to do that. Sixteen. That one's on the floor. Well, it's not. It's barely. Let's see if this one works any better. I want to get. I'm the one that took it apart, so I want to give it the best chance possible. There you go. So yeah, I took that screw out and some of the threads came with it. That's okay. I'm good enough. I'm smart enough. Doggone it. People tolerate me. So, is this the first, this is the first stream of the whole year, right? Oh, that that's exactly what this comment says. Uh... Derek, I'll let it read it. Hopefully it will read it. It might be just easier to take this off. Cross threads are better than no threads. There's at some point in every project where you're like, eh, just force it in. First stream of the year? Is the Sovel S06 Dimensions compatible with Prusa? If I decided to replace parts with Prusa i3 MK3 printed parts, would it fit? Would it fit? That's a great question. Derek, thank you very much for the 50. That is much appreciated. Uh, let's, since you are such a generous person, let's get one up here and just have a look-see, shall we? Let me get this back together real quick, and then we'll have a look. Don't let me forget, we're going to put a Prusa up here and see what it looks like. Hot cross threads. <laughs> exactly. Just force it in. Control panel only fits one way, and the part fan is supposed to be tilted. Okay. Cool. Cool. These little screws. Reminds me, there's something, uh, my MMU is uh, complaining over there and I need to fix it. I know, if you're an MMU2 owner, you're stunned. Get a bigger hammer. Uh... Parts might be the same. I don't know. Build an enraged cat. That's the one with all the servos and stuff on it, is it? That thing looks nuts. Should call it an enraged squirrel feeder. Because that thing's nuts. Watch your nuts, buddy. All right, this screw, we're going to garbage that one. So I think we're done with replacing screws. And the, what we got here? 
there is a ribbon cable that supports the tool head. So that comes in over the top. That's cool. Griffin's Closet Print Farm. I love that name. All righty, all right, Tom. Huh? What, whatever, whatever interests you. Uh, Prusa, Prusa. This one uh, looks much more oversized than uh, than Prusa would be. The parts might still fit it. The lead screws and everything are going to be much much longer. Because what is this? I don't even know what the build volume on something like this is. Um, nope. All of this is just telling me when my order is going to get here. Well, Joel Telling's face is on their website, so they've done their job. It does have a G34 auto align, so it's 222-2250. So it's automatically going to be a lot taller than the Prusa machine. But could you use the printed parts? I think you could. I mean, the space in between the rods and everything would be a concern, but I think that's fine. It does have a little different style T-nut on it, so you would, or trapezoidal nut, so you would have to switch that out. You could probably get by with the bot, with these Z parts just fine. I don't know. With, you could make it work, you could make a lot of them work, I think, with limited modifications. But you'd probably still have to get in there and tweak it and things. I don't know. It could happen. It could happen. They have STLs for all the, for the, all the injection molded parts. Nice. Good deal. Okay, so all we have to do is put uh, the business end on. They have a brass fitting for the filament to go down in. Do they have any sort of coupler that goes with that? I would, I would think you'd want something in between that and your filament, but... Oh, hold on. We gotta take a call.
So I'm back just for a second. Uh, I have to take care of something. I got a quick phone call. It's not an emergency. I just have to take care of it. I will be back in like two minutes, I promise.
Okay, sorry. Everything always happens all at once. People, the, the viewers go up because people want to see if I actually come back. All right, so where were we? Uh, it's, uh, we've had some interesting business transactions and they always want uh, more paperwork. And for some reason, they like to do it on Saturdays. So uh, that's, uh, that's what's going on with that. So let's put the power supply on. The hold music. Is there music on that thing? I don't know if there were, if there was any. Is there? Oh, nice. <laughs> For some reason I thought that one was silent. Pinky called, wanted help to take over the world. Not tonight, Pinky. What do we got? Coffee time on the West Coast. Hans, thanks for joining us. Very active Facebook community. Cool. Hopefully they're all being nice to one another. Power supply is on. These are very easy to strip, by the way. Make sure that's somewhat lined up. There you go. More coffee needed. Absolutely. Oh. Oh, yeah. So, power supply is on. Now I'm going to zoom back in. Because that's what I was working on when I left. And this thing should just be four screws. They do have brass inserts. All the plastic parts. Like so. Oh, really? The plastic is just decorative. Nice. That's good. Uh, James from Rushmare 3D is here. What is up? Tune X for XYT. I don't know if I know the what's what's all encountered in that. I don't. I use my tool changer sometimes, not not super frequently. I did recently get. A Hamera XS, the smaller one, that I'd like to try to put a tool head on there with it. So I might do that sometime soon. But I really, the tool changer does seem very neglected. Should uh, should use it more, and I don't. Is there only three? Only three. Okay. Now I think all we got to do is wire it up. <laughs> uh, Killer Prince, hello? Just decorative. It was an important, the tool changer was an important time in our 3D printing history. 
My mom is here. Everyone say hi to Bonnie Royal. That is my mother. Thank you very much for the $10, mom. Uh, I will buy candy with it later. Um, wiring. So the hot end wiring is real easy. There is another plug over on this side. I'm not sure what that's supposed to be. Maybe that's a feature that comes later. My, your son is doing great work, Mom. See? I told you. Skipping school and taking apart all the electronics in the house finally paid off. All right, so what do we got here? We got X. Is that long enough for X? I could see that getting pulled out. And Z1, I guess that's over here. I don't think you can go wide enough on this to see what I'm doing. Well, maybe you can. So Z1's down here. And then where is it's under this Z2. And then there's one for the screen. I'm guessing that's EXP3. They usually are. Uh, yeah, EXP3. Z1, X, Z2. Uh, we need to check our power. The power is currently set to 230. So uh, now it's set to 115 for uh, us folks over here. What else? I think that's it, right? Time to turn on. It's nice and flat. I guess I can put the spool holder on. Guess. They did give me an SD card. Well, what's the best way to do this? I guess you could like do it what do they do on the picture i'll do it i'll do it all like all the cool kids do it i've got every text driver out possible now you know you're doing it right you need to find your tools if just remember the last thing you're working on because they're on the floor wherever that was pro tip Uh, Sergio, you don't know how that, that, that just rings so true, uh, how my childhood went. Sometimes I actually got it back together though. Sometimes, not all times, sometimes. Uh, it is laminate. It's very cheap laminate flooring and it's not as flat as I'd like it to be. Three D clippy for it, nice. Uh, I did not see it on this machine. I did see you got it working on the mini, so that's cool. Had issues tramming. Okay. Full send. He is a great son. Oh, all right. Pull up. Pull up. Uh, power up. Let's see how we do. Came on. Fan's working. It is booting. There's something on the screen. 
All right. Done. End of stream. Uh, they give you steps about preheating and all of that good stuff. I know this sheet will need some work. At least a little work. I never have good luck with these sheets in PLA, honestly. We could probably do PETG and everything would be just fine. Don't forget to adjust your belt tension. Is it really bad on these? They do have a little adjuster, so that's good. This one's not so bad. That one's pretty, pretty tight. How about this one? This one's probably a little too tight, maybe. So I think tension's okay. Let's uh, deal with our bed leveling here. Let's go to preheat. Let's see what it does when it tries to level. It's hit or miss. Okay. <laughs> well, see you later. <laughs> and you can see the screen here. They didn't get sick. You've seen this before? There it is again. You'll want to follow them to work properly. I saw that there was a little bit of a, a dance going on there in the manual. Yeah, they, have you, they give you a whole leveling guide. Ta-da! Mm -hmm. All right. Step one, press knob, bed leveling. So they have auto align Z. So basically what we're talking about is it's got a G34 in Marlin. It's, it, it could be using a probe. It could be running all the way to the top. Either one, we'll see what it does. So let's let it do that. Essentialist homing is at play here because I don't see any in stops. So that's a good indication. This needs to be like, whoa, that Z is, uh, yeah, it's going to take a minute. What kind of filament do we want to use today? I think the last Benchy we did was with that striped stuff, that two color stuff, and the Benchy looked horrible. Um, maybe a nice red today? I don't know, what are you feeling? You watch it, see what it does. I'll walk over here. Um, I kind of want red. How about some filamentum? I believe they, this is either like stoplight red, I think is what they call this. I don't remember. How about this? I like this color. Polycarbonate. <laughs> Uh, newfound drone productions. Hello. Uh, not independent. It only has four drivers. So I'm guessing what's going to happen is it runs all the way up to the top. Here, let's, uh, can you widen that a little bit? Nope. I'm guessing it's, it, it homed. So it's going to run all the way to the top and seed it up here and call that level.
but that can't happen because of this cable. So this is supposed to go down. Didn't have enough room to do that. Hold on. I don't like this already. Tombstone pizza. Mmm. This would have to be like down flush to make that happen. Now I'm going to stop it and go again. It's only got the one clip holder on the top. And I would think there'd be one like down here below or something. But hold on. You can, de you know, you mentioned senseless homing. You can definitely tell a little bit over there on X, it'll grind a bit. Yeah, it's going to be really hard to tell on the camera what's tilted and not. Try to square it up a little bit for you, but it's going to look wonky. Lack of a fifth driver. <laughs> yep, my good old Weller soldering iron. The only thing I don't like about that is it's the fine tip. It works really good for certain things, but not everything. So I've got a hacko that I use on the other side over there most of the time. It should crash at the top, but it actually collided with the cable. So I want to. I want to. I'm starting again to make sure that it crashes where it's supposed to, and not on the cable. That's much better. The cable's out of the way. Okay, so we've collided at the top. So that's the G34 command, right? We've, we've leveled with the top of the gantry. You can do G34 two ways. You can do it that way, like Prusa does it, or you can do it with a fifth driver. So if you had independent Z, I'm trying to explain this for folks that don't know. If you have independent Z, you have another driver. You can use the probe to touch points on either side, and then using those probe measurements, it will tilt it for you because those motors are independent. You can't do that in this design. So that's that's the best they're going to be able to do here. So hopefully your frames good to go, square, all that good stuff and they call this level. And what do they want you to do next? Bed leveling. After clicking auto home for the first time, the bed machine will preheat automatically. Okay, so now we're gonna go to bed leveling. Auto home. Is there one with preheat? Was it just that one? Auto home. And it does. It sets it to 120 and 60.
After the temperature is reached, reached click Auto Home again to process. Give the cable a twist. Okay. Probe Z offset to adjust it. Uh, and I guess we're playing the paper game. Because I mean, I would think that, yeah, okay. Feels a little warmer than 60 by the burning of my fingertips. Okay, so offset, I'm calling about 1.4. And then store settings. Beat it. And then level bed. Twenty five points. What is the capital of Nevada for twenty five points? <laughs> yeah, hilarious. Uh, am I going to use Prusa Slicer? Yes, I am. Let's, uh, man, the video is way far behind, I've noticed in the screen. Interesting. Uh, I am going to use Prusa Slicer. And we should slice our Benchy right now. Where is the screen properties? There we go. Um, what do you think? Ender three it, and then adjust from there. Use the Mark III profile. Um, we're going to have to uh, change a lot if we do that. Has a backstory. Back to the future, man. Uh, only change the dimensions to match it. So what? So Bill, what about what about the G eighty? You don't have to change the G eighty.
That's the only change, right? The, the, the G80 is what you're talking about. It ignores G80. Each subsequent print will be applied to this leveling data. Let's see if their SD card works. I would assume since it's Marlin. Well, let's just run it. Why not? Did I realign? Nope. Let's just see what happens. Oh, they have a Benchy on here. What is on the corner of the camera? Just shadow, I guess. Full send. Oh, this has already got a tip gun on it. Way to go. Saving the day for future, Chris. I don't care for this brass insert there. It had some black filament in it. Hold on just a moment. Now I'm back for good, I swear. Uh, so SD card, Benchy. I got a bunch of stuff I need to do today too. This is not turning out well. Now I'm gonna sneeze again. Uh, uh, change filament. Print from media. Benchy, go, do it, make it happen. Let's switch to the short one. Mm. 
make it so. This is what happens when you try to finish up business late, like 7 o'clock on a Friday. It spills into your Saturday. Yeah, it definitely could use a little bit of a... Uh, Um, sensorless homing adjustment. What's it doing? Trying to do the Prusa thing. Oh, it laid some down. Can't, does it have baby stepping on it? You can do probe offset. It does allow you to adjust it on the fly, so good on you, Soval. Because this is a textured bed, I want that filament to be really mashed in there. It looks pretty good. Can we get a first layer look? It's really hard to get that first layer look. Can we make it focus? No. Oh. Remind me that this is on manual focus now. We need just a little bit more light in there to get good pictures. My flashlight is way too bright, I'm guessing. <laughs> it's got a, it's got a, uh, It's got a clip on it. I could try to clip it onto the top of the camera. Don't forget you're on Mail of Focus. Thank you, Ryan. I appreciate that. Will it go to 300C out of the box like it claims? I don't know. UB, thanks for joining us. Um, so, like I just said, yes, I found the tuning. It works well. You've printed several PC parts at 275 without issue. There you go. And this is supposed to have like a bimetallic break in it, correct? That's what it says on the thing. So if it does truly have that, uh, you can print 300, no problem at all. Motorhead Mitch! What is up, Mitch? Uh, thank you. Yes, we haven't done a lot of live streams, but man, I got a lot of them to do. We got to get caught up here. That thing's cooking. You can really, it's, it's doing some work. It's going to knock that benchy out in no time. All right, let's clean up a little bit, and then I'm going to try to get set up. I hear filament rub, or am I just paranoid? It might be that cable. Um, get clean up a little bit, and then I'm going to try to get set up to start on the next project. You're going to get a bonus project today, I think, because I really need to get caught up on some stuff.
Prusient enclosure, I don't know. The Prusient enclosure is pretty tall, I, but I don't know if this will fit in there or not. I'd have to do some measuring. So far though, Soval SV06, I dig it. Um, I like that extruder setup. I like that it's direct drive. Stationary bed. Uh, the price is right. You can't ignore that. So, so far, I think it's doing a great job. Great jerb. Hey, strong bad. Great jerb. Some of you will know what that is. The rest of you just think I'm crazy. I, don't want to throw, I won't throw your nozzle away, SV06. Sp Sp06. Nylon and TPU, there you go. Perfect. What is filament rub? Filament rub is the term that I use when I can hear the nozzle gripping filament. Like you kind of hear this crackle sound, like maybe the print has pulled itself off the bed just a bit or something like that. And you start to hear the nozzle click a little. It's kind of like Rice Krispies. You hear it doing that, that noise that you, re you get really used to hearing. And I think that the print is getting ready to fail or something like that. So that is nozzle rub, what I refer to as nozzle rub. Nozzle rub could be a medical condition. And if you have that, consult your physician because that's not gonna be good. That's gonna lead to some things we don't wanna talk about. Because that's not what we do here. Um, next project. Next! Uh, let's get this one situated. Uh, that's what I need is one more cardboard box on the floor. I need this too tight. Too tight. Uh, let's do this so you're not so sick. So... Should we put the Soval on this side and work over here? Or I think that's the best way to do it. So let's do that. So what are we, what are we doing next? I'm not gonna get finished with it, but we have some time while we're printing our Benchy. We'll watch the Benchy, we, we will chat. Uh, Steven Lightspeed's here, what's up Steven? Um, we know you are, thanks Bob. <laughs> Time Double TV. Thanks for joining us. What was I talking about? I have a project that's coming up. So I currently have four total Prusa Mark Threes. They're workhorses. I've bought them. I've I've bought one like every year they've been out, basically. Uh, just as another workhorse. I know them. They do their job. Uh, they, they never give me any problems, so that's why I buy them. Well, I have purchased another one. This time, actually, I got an all-black Prusa Mark III, which I feel a little funny about. I am, like, the number one fan of Team Orange, but I also really like black. And I thought, okay, I've already got a couple. Let's go ahead and get a black one. So I have a project coming up that's specifically for this Mark III, but I bought the kit version, of course. I couldn't spring the extra money for a built one. Uh, so I have to build it. So I got to get started building it. So that's what we're going to do now. Uh, I just, I don't intend to get all of it done. Just, just long enough for this Benchy to get printed. But maybe I can get started. I think my record on building a Mark III is six hours or something like that. But it'll give us something to do, chat about. And uh, it's work that has to be done anyway. So let me move this out of the way while it's printing. <laughs> Team Orange sad. Team Orange only pawn in game of life. Don't try that at home, kids. All right. Oh, are we going to have enough cable? Zoom might have to do the job on this one. Remember, you set it to manual focus.
it's really hard to focus when the when you have to see it all the way from over there. Try that. See if that's going to get you what you need to do. Black is the new orange. Excellent. Maybe crank up the speed? Eh, we'll let it do its thing. It does have kind of a crunchy sound, though. I'm guessing that's maybe the grease in the extruder gear? Maybe it's the X bearing. Or it could be just that cable moving around. Oh no, I'll have to investigate that. It has just a little bit of a crunchy sound that I don't like. Michael was on last week. Awesome. I could always reprint them in orange. I could. I could do that. Love the black Mark Threes. I want somebody. They were doing... I don't remember who it was now. Way noisy on yours. Uh, you can always reprint the parts the correct color. Uh, I was watching somebody that was, they were doing content on print farms. Like they had a print farm. They were some, some, I don't know what he made. He made something. He was a manufacturer of some kind. So he had like nine Prusa Mark threes and all of his were black. And I'm like, that's not right. He should at least have one orange one, like in the middle or something. I do like the idea though of, uh, I've seen a lot of folks in their farm, they just reprint the screen bezel or whatever to all these different colors so that they can tell them apart in the farm. I think that's pretty cool. That's a good idea. Crunchy is only good for eating. Mmm, crunchy. All in black. You're a rebel. Like VZBot or Voron Trident. I'm glad you brought that up. Just yesterday, I released a Patreon update video, uh, and I talked about all of the stuff we have coming up, and the Voron Trident is next on the list. So, uh, yes, I do have, I have a couple of custom builds coming up. That one, and the Moldex. I'm going to get lined up to do them both. Want to build one now, I know. I have that same problem. Okay, shipping list. Stickers, what, so they always kind of change up the stickers. I do really like the temporary spool holder sticker. Um, I would, if I had a, a full page of those, they'd be all over the house. Oh, they still have assembly instructions? I thought they stopped printing these and sending them. Well, I guess that's cool. Really, the only reason why I wanted to start on this was so that I could eat some of these uh, gold bears. It's true, you know. You know how I feel about candy. Um, they do. They always change up the stickers a little bit. <laughs> as soon as he finishes it, I'm going to take a look at building that thing. Uh, what, um, what was I going to say? We we're talking about that Patreon video and things that were getting updated. Oh, so this thing, I'm going to do a little bit of this build today, but I do intend to finish it this week, uh, but I'm going to do them and sorry for everybody, but I have been severely neglecting the Patreon people and they, they provide like over half the channel's income at this point. Uh, I've been neglecting you all, but we're going to do like maybe two live streams midweek in the evenings, US time. Uh, sorry for European folks. I'll try to do it early evening, so maybe some of you can join for a little bit uh, to finish this up. So Patreon updates will be out for that. So check your local listing. But I'm not going to plan on doing anything on this table until this thing is built. So we have to get it done soon. So 
more contents can flow. Always get the classic Prusa Silver. I don't know if Filament PM still makes this or not. They, they list it as basic filament. I don't know if PM's still providing this. Because that's... they Old school Prusa filament was filament PM. You didn't know that. They're kind of spindy, but they're the tastiest ones. And they come with a free 3D printer, so... Can't beat it. Harboro is poor gummy bears. They're, they're Aaron. They're not my fave. If there are there are lots of different styles of gummy candy, and I am a connoisseur of them all. Uh, Harboro is not my number one. There, there's a lot of them that I like better. Um, I need to get like a list and grade them from from top to bottom. I had some the other day. Who made those? Um, man, now I can't think. I had some really tasty ones. And I can't remember who made them. I don't care for the Black Forest ones. That's a big gummy candy brand. Um, Pretty much anything that Starburst makes in the gummy candy, I really like. Cyber Bob subscribed. I didn't. Thomas subscribed. And I didn't say anything. And um, Nat's Neil, closest I'm gonna get. Thank you for the sub. Hmm. All of the Ness? Well, Adam, we're going to have to figure that out. I'm going to have to get some of those then. I'm going to turn my channel into just trying gummy candy. Should change the gummy candy to beef jerky. Uh, Sergio never gets Patreon updates. I wonder why. I can't figure it out, Sergio. What compels me to buy the printer? I have tons of them. I do. Uh, but what's one more? Um, yeah, there you go. My mom's jumping in. She's also a candy connoisseur. That's where I get it from. Um, that's, that's my new channel. Chris tries candy with mom. Million subs right now. Um, I love the Mark III, Stephen, honestly. It's super consistent. Um, I have tried to beat them down, and they just keep coming back. Uh, I always know, like, if I need to get a project done, I need to print a lot of stuff for something, I just send it to the Mark Threes, and I don't worry about it. It's, I'm not saying they don't mess up, but it's very rare. So, having another, when, when all the Mark Threes are busy, I'm like, maybe I should have another one. <laughs> Uh, they just, they get the job done. I don't have to mess with it. And I'm not, also, I'm not saying there aren't other printers out there that do a better job and they're probably just as consistent. I don't know about them yet. So, hence why I get another Mark III. They just don't let me down. And that's plain and simple. It's just, it's from, it's just from my own experience. I just keep buying them. And hopefully the next evolution of Prusa will be the same way. And if it isn't, um, then things have gone bad wrong. Because that's what we've come to know from Prusa, right? It has to be, or it's, it's not going to work. The Mark III was a, was a game changer. So was the Mark II in its own right. But the III has really changed things. So, that's it. That's all. Very simple.
Oh, you don't have a Mark III right now? That's kind of like the... I don't know, what is the Mark III in the toolkit? Oh. Um. <laughs> scold me for eating... <laughs> you know, scold me for eating the gummies before the build? I know. I'm doing it out of order. On a Mark IV? We'll let it read its thing. I'm kind of curious how the voice thing is going to do I4, I3. Your thoughts on I4, I3, MK4? Hmm. I, honestly, I think it would be a waste of time to go to the I, to, to, to go to Mark IV. I think they could. I mean, they could easily, right? Okay, here's the brand new shiny I3, I4, whatever you want to call it. It, it does the same thing, only it costs more money. Uh, I mean, I think that they could go the, the touchscreen route and do all this and that and whatever to make a new Mark IV, but I don't think it's necessary. I think we're done with that. Um, this is a great example. I mean, they're still throwing more things on it, which is cool, and this thing is cheap. I mean, you can buy these really, they're really affordable. That's cool and everything, but been there, done that. I'd much rather see them go in a different direction. Um, I, I think, I think if they did come out with another Mark III, i3 style machine and called it anything, I think everybody would be, would feel like it was some sort of money grab. It, unless there's just like some really awesome features that come out that I don't know about. But I think just the fact that it's a moving bed printer, keeping it, you know, the, the iteration three style, um, that's not going to fly. I, I just, I don't see, I, th I think, I think everybody would, would up and turn uh, if, uh, if Prusa decided to go that route. I, th I think they're done, but you never know. It's just my opinion. So we'll see what they do next. We do have the XL coming out, hopefully, in the first couple of months of this year. We'll see what it looks like. XL but smaller? Yeah, maybe. Uh, bed slingers in 2023, they're still alive. And that, that everybody's always down on bed slingers. And I understand. But, like, all of these printer designs that we see now, <laughs> drop beds, you know, all, all the super fast stuff that we see, uh, bamboo. I mean, bamboo has a lot of different features. Like, they've got very specific features. But I'm just talking about, like, printer designs, the core printer designs. Everybody gives the bed slinger a hard time, but it's just the one that took off, right? I mean, it, they've, they, it, they ran with it, and now they're super common. All those other designs were still around. I mean, look at Ultimaker. Um, it's just popularity. You know, I mean, it's not, like, it's not like that's the old design, I guess is what I'm trying to say. They're all really old. <laughs> um, in fact, probably the i3 was newer than a lot of the other styles that came out around that time. Just cheaper to make. That's right. Ultimaker is not Core XY. Um, it's just like a standard Cartesian. It's just done from above. Unless the new ones are. They weren't traditionally Core XY. I know. Uh, I, I was surprised to hear that when I, when, when I first found that out as well. Uh, really, the only reason why I don't look at Ultimaker, I'd like to have one just to have one, honestly. But the only thing that keeps me away from it is the filament size. I would try to get a used one or something just to play around with and check it out. But uh, I, I no longer want to mess with 3mm filament. I'm done with that. I still have some if somebody needs it. But uh, I don't want to mess with it any longer. How's the Benchy doing? Looks pretty good.
You can convert them to 175, but I think it's quite the process because they use those cartridges. They, use, they have the cartridge nozzles now. I think it's probably somewhat, knowing Ultimaker, it's pretty spindy. Pre-ordered the XL? Yes, I, I am in line. I, my money is in with Prusa for pre-order. Yes, it is. But yeah, and, and you know, that's another route they could go, right? Um, yeah, the cross gantry. I don't remember what we like to call that, but yes, that, that style. Um, it, we'll see what they do with the electronics, right? I mean, because that's where we're going now. We're fixing things in software, which, I mean, that's, that's the normal route technology usually takes. So we're fixing things with like input shaper and, and all of that good stuff. Um, I haven't decided that yet, Ryan, about how many, uh, how many tools I'm getting. I just put in the flat money and I guess before you actually buy, you can select, um, from what the update said the other day, I think, uh, like they were going to do the singles and then, but you were going to have to wait a lot longer if you wanted the tools too, something like that. I don't remember exactly. So we'll just see when the time comes, uh, how I'm feeling. I really... I don't really see the need for five. Um, maybe like if you could do just two, I'd go that route. Five would be cool. It'd be fun. But basically I would just be, you know, doing mini Joe Prusas and PLA if I had five tool heads. If I only had two, that's a lot of black parts. Uh, if I only had two, I'd probably just use it for like supports. What was I talking about before? Uh, XL. You have a CR10 that uses 285. Interesting. One, two, and five. So yeah, maybe just like two. Oh, software and such. Um, so yeah, maybe that's the route to get you into another iteration of of i3 machine. Maybe they will just, we'll see what they do with the XL. Are they going to put input shaper on it? Um, you know, what's the board going to look like? Are they going to, are they going to go the canvas route and have boards isolated for each kind of tool head? I think the evolution of this next one, they're working on with XL. However, that turns out, maybe that would open a door to, to evolving the, the Mark three. I don't know, but I'm sure They'll get creative with it one way or another. All right, what do I need? Which bag do I need, I guess? M516s is what they use. That's this one. Okay. Any luck with the FT6? Um, I have the F I, So I switched the FT6. I made a kind of a short video on, on what happened. But um, I managed to get the FT6 over to a Himera, and it has been flawless ever since. Uh, I am, I'm very impressed with how that machine has done. Like, I printed all of the candy claw. If you've seen anything on the candy claw, all the big parts were done on the FT6, and it has done a really great job. So, um, it took a lot of tweaking and, and all these different things to get that thing working how it should. A lot of money as well. I mean, I think the kit cost 700, and I probably put three or 400 in it. No, more than that, four or 500 in it on top. But it does work really well now. So, it is, it's just a printer left in the arsenal. James is here. What's up, James? Sonic Alchemy, James. <laughs> Hopefully it reads that. We'll see. It's always awesome to come out and see everybody. I love it. 
My wife really likes it too. Okay. Thank Read you it. and your wife there for being go. very kind in ERRF last year. I'm happy to see the old log back there. Yeah. Um, it's uh, again, thank you for the 10 3D obsession. I, I appreciate that. It's always great to see everybody at these festivals. I'm going to four this year, and this is a great segue. Um, I, I love to come out and just talk to people and, you know, have them actually see, you know, th taking log and things like that. Everybody wants to see it because it's been on so many videos and that's cool. Um, that's really, you know, where you start to feel like, that's what this is all about, right? Um, but they're doing a Rocky Mountain Rep Rep Fest. It's in Loveland, Colorado, and that's like the, the furthest west we've had a, a Rep Rep Fest at this point. Uh, and that is in like the last weekend in April. I believe it's the 23rd through the 26th, I want to say. But I, ho I will be there. We're going to drive over. It's like a 10-hour drive for us. Um, we're going to bring a lot of stuff. Hopefully, I get to see some of you there. So it's always good to see the new festivals, you know, spin up, and uh, get to see everybody. So maybe you know, Denver's a little easier than than some of the other places we go, like good old Goshen, Indiana. So check that out. Um, somebody, Mike or somebody, can probably put that in the. Uh, in the chat for us. It's the I think there's an rrf.org or something. Have you built a Voron switch wire and how do you like it? I have built a Voron. Yep, 20 22nd 23rd. Thank you. Um yes, we built a switch wire. I I'm not a f big fan of it. <laughs> and that again <laughs> I try people are so nice right I, the, the people in our community are really nice folks and I don't like to offend anyone so and like some of these Voron builds they're like pet projects for specific people so I don't like you know this out and out I don't like this thing it's not the fact that I don't I don't like it I just don't really see the purpose of it it's it's cool what they did I mean, the switching the belts over to Z and, and you know, taking the Prusa parts and all of that stuff and, and building it into a Voron style machine, it's cool. I mean, it's a cool project. Um, but, at, but at the end of the day, as like a printer that, that I want to use for projects and, and all of that, it just doesn't do anything for me. Um, it... Uh, it requires just a little bit too much effort for what it is. Now, like a 2.4 or some other type of build where, you know, you're going for super awesome speed and you're going to have these really, you know, fantastic outcomes. I could see putting in that type of work to tune it and get it right. Uh, the switch wire just didn't, uh, didn't seem like it was worth the effort. That's all. Still a fun build, though. It's fun, but it's quite expensive for what it is. But cool, but cool. And there's nothing, you know, if, if there's anything that I've ever done on this channel, I don't like to say, can't. Or, or, yeah, Eddie, thank you for the sub. I am all about, can we do something? And not about, should we do it at all? Let's not question it. <laughs> there, there's no need to, to, to say should. Let's just go ahead and we'll work the, the why we did it out later. We're just having a good time here. Let's just go ahead and do it. And, and that some of the Voron stuff, I think it's that way. That's how I feel about it, which is totally fine with me. Uh, just as, you know, as a 3D printing builder, cool. I'm down with that. As a 3D printing user, eh, maybe not so much. I know a lot of people are really happy with those V01s. I have yet to build one of those. 
because we can, and it's fun. Chris Travis is here. What's up? That's right. We're not hurting anybody. Just building some 3D printers, man. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep, yep. We did that. Mm-hmm. And we're going to put some more extrusions on. Hobbies with Newbie. Thank you for joining. Have a good dinner. We'll see you soon. What's the next stream? I gotta finish this thing, but I'm gonna do that with the Patreon folks. So we'll get some some cuddle time together. Um, I guess we start on the Trident next. Uh, I gotta print out a whole bunch of parts. So the Trident, I, I cracked the Trident open. I usually don't do that. I cracked it open to see what kit we got. And we got the gunmetal color. Now, the gunmetal is actually a really cool color by itself. It's almost kind of a, it's so gray, it's almost kind of purple. I know that doesn't make any sense, but it's, it's a neat color on its own. So I, I was trying to think, well, what, what color filament do I want to build this thing with? And I really don't want to overshadow the frame, because I think the frame looks pretty neat. So I think. It's going to be mostly, I might get like some soul black, printed solid soul black with some glitter in it or something. Um, or, or something like that. It depends what, which filament I want to go with. But I'm thinking I'm going to do like an all black and gray kind of, kind of modern looking build on that one. No crazy colors. I don't know. It just, I, I, I saw a picture of it built and then I saw the frame color and I'm like, mm, I think we should stick with some basic colors maybe. It's great. You like that? Awesome. Everybody always says you have to do ABS. Uh, I need to look at that design again. My switch wire is all PETG. Uh, and it has been, you know, there, I haven't had any issues with it. Uh, but also, I think the enclosure for the switch wire, the one that I put on there, it just makes it too hard to do anything. So I pulled it off. So I'm not printing inside an enclosure. Uh, depending on enclosure temperatures, you might have a problem with PETG. But hopefully, you're not printing at like 60C or something. But I don't know, maybe you are. Hey, you are very welcome. Uh, I enjoy putting in the time. I wish I had more time to do this stuff, because I do enjoy it. I, I enjoy working with folks trying to fix their problems and things in the community. Uh, I just don't have as much time as I'd like. In a perfect world, I could quit my day job and just do this, but that's not gonna happen anytime soon. Building a route rig. Uh, Martin, I have not been approached about a rat rig. Um, I would build one, uh, but I don't know any folks over there. Nobody's really said anything about it. So I don't have any plans currently. My buddy Dave Wilson, he might be on this stream. He really likes Rat Rig. Uh, I need to get, he lives really close to me. I need to get over to his house and check him out. And maybe after I see one, I'll have to have one. I don't know. But I don't have any t plans at this time to build one. Does everyone like to hate PETG? <laughs> I didn't know that. I love PETG. I use it all the time. <laughs> uh, 
Use polycarb instead. There you go. I'll one up you. I'm gonna polycarb this thing. We could. We could totally do that. Uh, the only thing about polycarb that I don't like is it. Like I like to use those PEI sheets. You know, like these with just the the film on them. And the polycarb shrinks and pulls the sheet off. <laughs> it's really annoying. Uh, I recently got a satin sheet where it's still it's not powder coated, but it is. Uh, I haven't tried it yet, but I'm hoping that it's the fix for, for that problem. People always be hating. <laughs> and somebody's always going to have a problem with something, but yeah, that doesn't matter. That's cool. I print PEDG a lot. It's a nice mix of it's it's a nice in between between PLA and uh, ASA for me. PLA is so rigid though. Uh, I mean, it it works for a lot of stuff, but PETG definitely has a place. It hates me. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't know people didn't like the EI sheets. I guess I don't read the right forums. I love it. Um, the smooth sheets, I, I like all three of them. I mean, I, I really don't have a lot of experience with that satin one, but I like where they're going with it. I know what they're trying to achieve, right? Um, the textured sheets are awesome for PETG and T TPU. The, but the smooth sheets, they're so easy to use with PLA. I, yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't be able to go without it at this point. I don't even know what we did back in the day where we had to use glue stick or where Tom was trying to get us to use blue tape all the time. <laughs> Cast and tape, yeah. I remember those days. The sheets are so... The PEI is so much more expensive now than it used to be, too. Back in my day... <laughs> still works in a pinch, it's true. Plus it has a nice texture. Blue tape has a very interesting texture. Wills, thank you for the sub. Uh, Nitten Debs Nook. I love that name. Thank you for the sub. Get off my lawn. <laughs> Old man yells at Cloud. <laughs> uh, awesome. How many have I assembled so far? This is my... So I have four, three, four Mark threes. Two of them were assembled. That one. And I got one. I bought one off of Prusa at Murph one year. It was already assembled. So then I have two more that I did. So this would be my third actual Mark three that I put together. And then I also put together the bear, which is basically a Mark three with a, without a flat frame. How do they do the new power supply now? I forget. The black one is different than the old chrome one. I always forget to put the T-nuts in. And I did again. I didn't get it all the way on, though. With a better frame? With, with a more rigid frame, without the flat frame. It's a very high-end frame. 
Glenn Hogue is here. What's up, Glenn? <laughs> we had to walk to the free store. Uphill both ways. No shoes. It was snowing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do the same kind of thing. It's, I'm not paying $25 for a sheet of Captain. I buy three rolls. <laughs> uh, your, your Sparta commercial. What are we doing after this? We're going to go to Jerry stream. You're at uh, like one o'clock West Coast time, right, Jerry? Or are you doing that today? I don't remember if you sent me a note or not. Now we're good. Being lazy. Ugh. The wheel and bearing hub on it. I, I would not want to be doing a, a wheel bearing today either. Doesn't sound like a good time. I notice our car is making an interesting noise that I need to investigate. I would say it was wheel bearing like, but. Uh, Probably not a wheel bearing, I would guess. But there's definitely some rub back there somewhere. I gotta go take a look at. I used to work on cars a lot. Just because I, for some reason, when I was younger, I thought it was a good time. Uh, I try to stay away from working on them as much as possible now. Will yous? 30 minute epoxy is all you need? I wish I could just pass some to you. Bear X axis soon? Cool, cool, cool. Uh, I was looking at frames the other day. Actually, I was talking to Tom Lama, who's on the stream, about uh, a red bear kit. And I just got curious, like, what frames were available. And most of them were out of stock over on the printed solid site. So I was kind of wondering, like, are they going to be getting some more? Is that still a thing? Are we waiting for another version? I don't know. I didn't follow up with Greg or anything, but we'll see if they get some more, and then I'll, I guess I'll know. Where's the feet? Oh, this reminds me, that MMU is still sitting over there going, help, help, I'm blinking and no one cares. I'm going to have to take gummy bears with me if I'm going to go over there, though. Send them in with a lock blade and a flashlight. I'm going to watch that while I come over here. Now it's got to get up to Tim. So I'll come back. I wish my stream deck was working. Don't break, don't break, don't break. Yeah, none of the... OBS got... Uh... Got an upgrade, and now uh, none of the transition buttons work. So I don't know what's up with that. Plastic parts. I don't think I really need any of this today. Probably won't make it to X axes today. I don't need this either. Hold that, would you?
<laughs> teal, black, red. It's stressing me out. You're bringing me down, man. I don't even know what that was from. Is that Space Ghost? I miss Space Ghost. Remember back in the day when you could watch cable and it was still affordable and there were shows on? Now you have to pay for streaming services because cable's way too expensive. And then you have to go find something to watch. And I never find anything. I just scroll for a while, get tired of scrolling, and then watch something on the internet. Don't we have like little parts trays or something? I almost shy away from the magnet pans because they steal all my stuff. But we'll go for it anyway. More of a wine red. Hmm, where'd you get the frame? Well, it used to be uh, Brian subscribed and Wrath957 subscribed. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it, they used to be only available through the guy's name is Orlando. Um, why can't I think of it? I want to say it's like all parts or now I can't remember now I got to look it up Torney Orlando no no Are they still in business? All 3D Maker? All 3D Maker? What? No. That's all 3DP. Maybe it's on one of my videos. Oh, I have a, a BOM for that somewhere. All 3D Maker sounds vaguely familiar. All something. YouTube description is your TV. Yeah, uh, yeah all 3D Makers. That's it. Whew. That was back in the archive. Uh, the domain is no longer there. So, I don't know what happened to them. If they're doing something else. But it is now being parked by someone else. So, all 3D Maker used to be the, the place we got those. So, sorry, whatever happened to you, all 3D Maker, we miss you. Um, so yeah, I need to uh, get to printing my Voron parts. If that's going to be the next build we do, then I probably ought to have some parts ready. New MMU hardware? Yes, yes. Oh, which reminds me. Oh, it's supposed to let that heat up and then check back. Camera's not, camera's a little wonky, huh? 
I need just a little bit longer cable for this camera. It's on a, um, what is that, what is that thing called? Um, you know, the convert, cam link converter thing. Man, I'm getting old. I can't remember anything. Cam link. Cord needs to be just a little bit longer. Oh, wait. Maybe it fixed itself. Oh, it did. Sweet. Cool. It's doing it. My work here is done. What now? Oh, yeah. Squirrel. John Strand is here. What's up, John? 18. This looks like an 18. Mike Fancy, what happened to that machine? Where is your Mendel I2 now? You know, life, I know. Life's ridiculous. Good while you got it, but man, such a pain in the ass. Mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm. Mm hmm. Well, they want that's a lock nut, though, right? Yep, nylock. Warm enough, I guess. Not warm enough to go set on the ground in the driveway, though. Yeah, no issues. Uh, in fact, we tried to we tried to make it have issues. We took everything apart at the beginning of the stream, but it it survived. So I guess it's doing good. Vinci looks really good. It's real nice for two thirty nine or whatever it was. What was the price we saw earlier? Price, price, price. I get no cutbacks from them. It's two fifty nine on their site right now. I think that's pretty good for the money. It's got Bill Steele's uh, stamp of approval. That should be a sticker. Bill Steele's. <laughs> Stamp of approval. I think we should make those for the Rip Rap Fest coming up. It's a cool name. Yes, I I totally agree with that. It it survived the tearing apart and the putting back together. So not every printer is going to do that. This one made it. I'm proud of you, Soval. Keep doing your thing. And make sure you're releasing your marlin and eating your vegetables and not irritating everyone. Yeah. Uh, yes, this thing came in record time. I put out a tweet when I ordered it and it got here yesterday. So I can't believe how fast it... Uh, it arrived. I don't. I, I say things like that. I mean, I'm. I, yeah, you know, I'm just trying to be entertaining, right? I, well, actually, I'm not trying to be entertaining. I'm just being myself. Uh, talking to 3D printers, whether anybody's here or not. Everybody gets very upset about things on the internet, as we all know. It is the internet, after all. That's what it's there for. Uh, but most of the time, uh, you know, I, 
I, yes, I don't think that companies should be doing certain things and, you know, they, sh they should mind their manners and do things correctly and, and all of that. I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I am with you on that. But I was kind of alluding to this a little bit before, but one, my, my ultimate goal here is just, you know, to, to enjoy this wonderful thing that they call 3D printing that makes objects appear out of thin air. I'm still impressed. Uh, so that's goal number one, to have a decent time. But two, you know, I think, you know, you talk with your wallet, you know, don't buy it if that's the problem. Uh, and not everything has to be some sort of witch hunt. You know, I, I think that I, I, we, so you get into some of these communities and you like it or not, 3d printing is kind of a niche market, right? And especially the hobby base, people like us. You know, there are, there's 3D printing is everywhere. Factories, they're making parts, all that stuff. I mean, it's, it's a solution to a problem in the industry. But they're at a different level than we are. So we talk, you know, we, we talk about at the level and what we know. And that's how things work. Uh, but at our level, the community we all belong to, for the most part, we're so tightly connected that you know you can you can have very very subtle changes you can you can say things very in a very subtle way and it spreads like wildfire so i don't think you know getting these companies attention i think we've proven that a few times in the last couple of years that uh yeah so now no one's going to buy anything uh, I don't know. I just don't see all the need for all of the noise. The noise, the noise on the internet has always bothered me. But again, it's the internet. What do you expect, right? Make sure your bearings are aligned correctly. You don't want the balls parallel with your carriage. Uh, I've done, I've, I got the manual going over here. There's some certain specific things that you have to do, um, like like getting these bearings aligned that I never remember. But for the most part, I've taken these enough that taken these apart enough that I can get through it. Photos Mint is here. I got to meet Photos in person for like a split second at Earth. Uh, he was everybody was wanting to talk to that guy, so I didn't get a lot of time. I didn't get a lot of time to talk to any one person really at all. Uh, but yeah, it was good to meet him. So I'm glad he's here. What is up? Fotus is always doing some awesome things. Fotus and Vedrin are two of my favorite people to talk to. Uh, they're very entertaining, especially when you have them together. Very entertaining folks. Excellent. Fotus just recently, I've been seeing on the, the interwebs, uh, did a big rollout with printables, Prusa printables. Uh, so all his models are over there. So that's good. Printables is my new go-to site. I'm tired of waiting on Thingiverse. I don't want to deal with it anymore. No, you're too nice. But thank you. It was good to see you. Uh, what are we doing? Oh, these are 12s. Not 10s. Oh, oh I'm actually going to find that one.
Finally, we're going to put, I think we're finally going to put Thingiverse to bed. I'm kind of interested to see what they do with Thingiverse and you imagine, because MakerBot and Ultimaker are the same company now. Twelves and tens are really hard to tell apart. There's one more in here, but I don't see it. It's because I used it on this bracket. Grab the twelve by mistake. They sold you, imagine. Oh. I didn't know that. See, I'm not up on all my 3D printing going-ons. Yeah, that is pretty cool. I've got enough Prusa meters right now, in fact, to get a spool. I haven't uh, shopped around to see which one I want yet. I think I might just go ahead and keep saving them, see what I can get. Um, I, the only thing I've ever gotten from them, I got the little metal cup, and I really like that cup. That's a cool cup. With the, it has the Prusa Slicer shortcuts on it, the shortcut keys. Nice, I like it. Just that little bit. That Vinci looks stellar. I'm gonna give that the, the Brother Chris seal of approval there. It looks very nice. Let you use it on ASA, cool. Uh, I got, last time I did a Prusa order, well, I've been getting a lot of it from Printed Solid now since they have most of it. I got some PC blend. I have not tried it yet. Uh, I really like their, it's my favorite ASA, that and Push Plastic. But uh, I haven't tried that PC blend yet. I'm sure it's fantastic. I never got Vinci's, but yeah, that's a good print. <laughs> uh, uh, you and a whole lot of people, man. I don't know why I I got into the whole Vinci thing. I don't even remember how that happened, but it did, and it's still here. We're still doing it. Snow Labs. You know, I don't get a lot of Snow Labs anything. I should, uh, I should go check them out. I've had it over the years, but not a lot. Bit stringy, yeah, that filament has some age on it as well. I'm not gonna make an excuse for it, but it is a little stringy, I would say. <laughs> Never got them in the first place. <laughs> yeah. We, uh... We have to talk to Mr. Noray about that one. Speaking of, I haven't heard from Daniel in a while. I need to catch up with that guy. It'd be cool to see him at some of the, the festivals again. He's a extremely nice guy. Fun to hang out with.
retraction recommendations from some will shift with newer units as well. This is at a 0 0.8. It also has Z hop enabled, so that will that can cause a little stringiness as well. Haven't got any more phone calls. That's good. Um, let's see what else. What else should I update you on? It has been a while. We did one of these right before Christmas. Probably don't know a whole lot new. I've I am. I kind of have a new job and I kind of don't at work. It's different. Um. It's kind of, it's one of those things like you, I'm out, uh, kind of out of my comfort zone. They're doing a lot of stuff that we don't usually do. So that can be somewhat frustrating when you don't know exactly what's going on all the time. But, you know, I'm still employed. They still pay me. So that's the most important part. So I've been focusing a lot of time on that, unfortunately. But you got to do what you got to do. Modbot just put out a video about the Manta E3 EX and how it took off the... Huh. I'll have to go check it out. I got one of those the other day. One of those boards. I haven't had any time to check it out. Daniel's, uh, Daniel does a lot of the same stuff I do. And I, By the way, I love Daniel. He's one of the greatest guys ever, if you've ever met him in person. Um, love that guy. Uh, he does a lot of the same stuff I do, but he gets to it way faster than I can. <laughs> uh, he's a, a lot more diligent about the, the content. He keeps up on it uh, a lot better than I am able to. So sometimes I can look at his stuff and go, nah, I don't want to tackle that. So thank you, Daniel, for that. What are you up to today, Fotis? Are you going to work on something? Are you going to create something awesome? I saw a veteran did a clicker. Are you going to do any Last of Us stuff? What'd you miss? Nothing. We're watching our benchy go. And we're uh, building, we're starting to build the pressure frame. I should have went and got some more coffee. I totally missed coffee time because I kept getting phone calls. All right, Fotis. See you soon. Have a good nap. Greasy. There you go. That would be awesome for a school. Some schools, I think the open, open frame printers are somewhat frowned upon by some folk at some of these schools. And I could see, you don't want the kids getting hurt. I am Smurf. Uh, so Smurf is the Sanjay Mortimer Rip Rap Festival, and it's going to be in England somewhere. I do plan on going to it. We're, we're trying to make everything happen. It is not cheap for us to get over there 
and attend, but we're trying to make as many arrangements as possible for us to make that happen. I would love to get over there for the first one and see everyone. So I hope to be there. Thanks for asking, Matt. in Oxford. I actually just joined, I was talking with the folks at E3D, and I know it seems like, why now? But I just joined their affiliate program. I didn't even know they had one, and I think it was Georgia sent me a message. She's like, hey, you should join this. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. So that, that, I haven't added an affiliate program in a long time. Uh, that was the first in a while. So I joined up with them. And now I have to go through the extremely painful process of adding it to the description on the videos. That's always a good time. I end up usually having to buy like two buddy for a month to get that done. Ultimate Rep Rap Fest. It's gonna be great. <laughs> uh, awesome, Tom. Have a good time buying your glue. Yeah, I, I hope that a lot of my UK friends are going to that to the to Smurf so that I can meet you. This might be one of our only opportunities. And uh, I always tell this story, but the UK people are kind of my people because of when I started out, right? Like everybody was from, all, everybody that joined the live streams were from the UK because I always did it. The only time slot I had at that time was Sunday morning at like 10 a.m. So everybody over there, it was right in time for them to be able to have some time, downtime at Sunday to watch the stream. So everybody was in that time zone. So that's kind of where I got my start. So there's a lot of folks that I've known for a long time over there that I would really like to get to meet. It'll be good. Ow. There we go. Yes. My lovely wife offered to bring me home a sandwich. Gotta love a woman that brings you food. Ah, the good old days. So, speaking of my wife, let's talk, let's talk bad about our wives for a minute. Uh, I'm just joking. <laughs> um, wow, that thing is like super far behind. That's weird. Uh, I am in, Zap, I am in line. Uh, let's stay with our life. No. Um, I'm in line for the XL, yes. Who's wife? Dave Wilson's here. Um, so, uh, I was just joking, by the way. But we were kicking around the idea last night. So, so my wife does work for the channel, right? She does a lot of the editing. She does a lot of the emails, all the communication, getting things lined up you know, booking travel, all the, all the admin stuff that I really don't have time to do. So she does officially work for Chris's basement. And we were think we were talking about this live stream and I was like, okay, I'm going to line up a live stream tomorrow. You know, so I'm going to be busy doing this. 
And we got to talking about it, and you know, a lot of the live streamers uh, will just use Jim over the edge of tech. Uh, a lot of folks, it's pretty common to have like sidekicks or producers or you know people to put things in the. You know, I have the moderators, which moderators are awesome, right? Oh, my wife is watching, by the way, so we can't talk bad about her. Um, <laughs> uh, they have a lot. They, the moderators are awesome. Mike, Fa again, I said about Mike Fancy, he's amazing. They can put stuff in there and, you know, they put stuff in the chat and try to keep you on, on page, but you still have to watch that chat, right? And it's always been helpful. I've seen streams where somebody watches said chat. So they can kind of keep, you know, each other informed or whatever. So my wife and I kicked around this idea. What if we did like a, a sidekick type stream? You know, she wouldn't necessarily be here building anything but maybe like just off to the side so that she could keep up with chat she could do links like maybe we could do i i don't know i i have no idea I, i'm still just kicking around this idea but i think it might be interesting we could at least try it it might go down in flames but you know hey this is one of my streams uh i don't expect to you know build a career doing this so maybe we'll give it a try next time i don't know it might be interesting, it might be entertaining. I'd still have to figure out like how to set up the audio and all that because we, you know, she'd want to be able to interact with anybody. Like she would want to be part of the audio, not necessarily the video portion. So I had to figure all that out, but eh, we'll see. <laughs> it works for low, low most, I, you know, I've only been on like one of his streams. So I don't know what his layout is. I know he's a big streamer. Um, ooh, there's my Vinci. Uh, so I don't know what he does, but uh, maybe I can give it a try. So next time we do this, maybe we'll try a, a sidekick type thing. She's gonna have to have a tagline like Ed McMahon or something. StreamYard, yeah, yeah. I might have to re uh, revisit StreamYard. We haven't used that since we did Fun in the Country Basement. Let's take a. I'll let that benchy cool for a second. Yep. So we'll give it a try. We'll we'll see. We'll see what we can do. I do miss Walter as well. I still talk to him on the phone somewhat frequently. Every month or so, I'll I'll have a chat with him. But those were the good old days of streaming when Walter was always on. <laughs> More shows. All right. All right. Benji looks really good. We're going to take a, a deep dive look at it here in just a second. I'm going to finish this part up and then we'll Benji it and we'll be done for the day. 3 Medic Vince is here. Hello. I figure everybody would like to to engage and see, so, you know, more the merrier. We'll see how it works. It's always been, it's been me, just me doing all this for a long time with my moderator's help. They, they need to be included in this because it is a huge help. But uh, we'll see, we'll see what we have to do to make that work.
bed stays hot a while. It's still sitting at 50. Nice, nice. It's a huge help. All the emailing and correspondence and, and all that stuff, you know, even outside the videos, it's a huge help to have somebody do that for you. About Smurf? Absolutely. Uh, is there a website? Does anybody know if there is a website and all that stuff? Oh, I heard that. Gl Thank you for mentioning that, Glenn. Uh, Glenn and James are still streaming Project Talk, but they switched it to Thursday night, 7 Eastern. They don't do Sunday anymore. So if you follow them, they have moved their time. So make sure uh, you change your... Uh, the you change the timer you have set on your phone to the proper day. Um, is there a site for Smurf and all that good stuff? Or okay, just a blog post on E3D site now. So check. Let's go ahead and do that because I want to make sure people get are able to follow that info. There it is. Oh, so it's just the only thing they have right now is this. And it's at the end of this blog post. So more to come. I'll keep reminding you about it. Okay, so if that's as far as we're going to get on the Prusa build for today. So we'll set that aside. Um, if you, again, I'm just going to remind you, if you want to hang out later this week for the Patreon folks, I'm going to send out a live stream leak. I think either Monday night, it could be anywhere from Monday to Thursday night. I'm going to try to do two streams, I would guess. Probably one to finish up the build, and then we'll, uh, we'll do a test print and hang out. Because I haven't done a stream with you folks in a long time. So I want to get that done. So be on the lookout. We're going to do some in the evening U.S. time this week to finish up this Prusa build. So there's that. Now let's check out this Benchy. I'm going to switch this thing back to autofocus because if I don't, I'll be going, why isn't this focusing? These keys are too small. There we go. Okay. So, how did we do? How did we do? This Benchy looks pretty darn good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give some props to this printer. This is the first one that we've done in a while that I, I'm actually like, ha, wow, that did a nice job. So here we are. Stop moving around. So you have, let me get the pokey tool. In fact, eh, I don't want to do that. Never mind. Good old autofocus. Okay. So there's an interesting artifact right there. I wonder what that is. That's something you don't see very often. Huh. I'm not sure what that is. I'm going to have to do a little investigation on that and run some tests. There is a little bit of stringing. 
So we could probably tune retraction in. Again, that filament is who knows how old. It's been sitting in open air. It is filamentum, so it shouldn't be an issue. There's very little ringing. I mean, it looks real nice. The extrusion is real even. You, the, when I look at the, the ringing or like the layer consistency, I always kind of look in here because it has to go around to all four of those points when it lays it down. And it's pretty nice. It's pretty consistent. It's a little bulgy in the corner there, but nothing, uh, nothing out of the scope. And the back, you can usually tell there, there you can start to see some of the belt and the ringiness in there. You can always tell in those short movements. But again, just as nice as a lot of Vinci's that I've seen. Top looks real good, no over extrusion. Deck looks real good. There's a little bit of a gap on that corner, which is not uncommon. Maybe, I don't even want to say under extruded. Might be a little bit of a dial in available for that. And then finally, how'd we do? It's a nice looking sheet. It's got a good texture on it. Good first layer. Overhang. Little bit of wobble in there. But if, you, if you're being super critical, but all in all looks pretty good. Still got the water line. That's a good looking benchy. I'm not gonna lie. So there we go. Yes, Nipix pliers, they're my faves. I love Nipix. <sighs> okay. Uh, I don't even want to know. Uh, good print for 239. Absolutely. Bill says it well. So that's my verdict on this. Um, again, it's an i3 style machine built with aluminum extrusion, just like a lot of other 3D printers that are out there. Uh, I saw it and went, yeah, that's what it is. But then I started to see how they made the changes, how they did things different in the extruder, and it was direct drive. So I thought it would be worth trying out because the price tag was only $239. So at that price point, this might be one that you need to look at. It is running Marlin, which I like to see personally, but um, nice, everything's, you know, a nice open source platform, all that good stuff. For $239, this is the best Benchy that I've seen at this price point. I'm just going to say that right now. All of the inner threes that we've done, of everything down in this range, this thing, this print right here, punches above its weight class, honestly. Um, I don't, I don't know a lot about the machine right now. I haven't done a lot of testing with it. I've done one print. I've only used one of these. But if my experience continues like this on this machine, two thirty nine, all day, three hundred bucks all day. Um, it's pretty nice. We'll see how long it lasts. I can tell you this. A lot of these machines that we do on here, I see the print coming off of it and I go, that's totally fine. Nothing wrong with that, but it's not worth me continuing to throw filament at it to try to stress it, to, to try to continue to test it out and see what's going to happen. Because it, at the end of the day, it's just another clone. Now this one, uh, I'll throw some effort on it. Uh, I, again, I did pay for this out of my own pocket. I'm going to throw a little bit of, uh, effort at it and see just what it does. See, see if failures come or something more, you know, wears out and try to give some you know, perspective on this over a certain period of time. I think it's, it's worth it. I think it's worth my time. So that's what I got. The Benchy, I sliced myself in Prusa Slicer with a Mark III profile. So there we go. That's all I got. 
Uh, I got it directly from Soval. I don't know what it is on Amazon. I'll find some links and make sure they're in the description. So we'll see. Okay, that is it for today. How long did we go today? We did a little over three hours. That's pretty good for us. Um, hopefully you enjoyed the stream. Thanks for everyone that came. Uh, thanks for all of the chats and the, subs the chat tips and the subscribers. I really appreciate all of that. That helps us out a lot. Uh, gives us the motivation. If nothing else, it gives us the motivation to keep doing this kind of stuff. Uh, again, look out for some notifications, some streams this week. And the next stream that we're going to do, we're going to start building that Voron Trident. I got to get some parts printed. So there it is. Thanks for all the mods, for keeping everybody in line. Uh, again, thanks for everybody that joined. We will see you very soon on the next stream, hopefully. Uh, this is the first one of the year, but there's going to be more than six that we did in 2022. I guarantee that. So I'll 